In today's video, we're going to be putting together and assembling a cabinet carcass the easiest way possible using just these two scrap pieces of wood. All right, so let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're here for the first time, welcome to the channel. Thank you for joining me in the shop today. We're going to be doing um, an easy method or an easier method than uh, we normally would use for assembling cabinets. If you've been following the channel right now, you know that I'm doing built-ins. If you haven't seen any of the cabinet building series videos, then go ahead on the channel and check that out. I have them all grouped up into a playlist. There's six videos in all right now. Um, I'm going to add this to the series as well. And so what I'm going to do is go through the assembly of the window seat portion of those built-ins that are going to fit between the cabinets and the wall. Now, if you are building any kind of cabinets, this will apply to you. The only difference is going to be that my applied toe kick or cutout for what would be a toe kick is going to be towards the rear instead of the front. And like I said, if you've seen the videos, that's because I'm working around the baseboard heating system where this goes and slides over that baseboard that sits behind it and the heat will radiate through the front. When you do built-ins, you don't need a toe kick because it's not a kitchen. You're not going up to it and having your feet go underneath that applied toe kick. You don't need room to work. This is just for storage of clothes and things like that. So basically, if you had, um, if you were assembling kitchen cabinets right now, this would be your toe kick. It would be in the front. Okay, so the only difference would be you'd be turning it around. So just keep that in mind as you watch this video of me assembling these cabinets. Okay, the other thing that I want to go through real quick is being that I have that baseboard there which needs this is a 140 millimeters up this cutout right so i want my bottom of the cabinet to sit here now i could make a line across with a t-square and i could have pocket screws or screws coming from the outside this is going to be sandwiched in between two walls you're never going to see this outside of the carcass so we can run the screws across through the outside so that's part of the easy process right now. So if you're doing cabinets between walls, uppers or lowers, that's a, you have the same situation. You can hide those screws very easily because nobody's going to see them. You won't have to plug them up or anything like that. You won't have to use pocket screws. But if you had a situation where you did need to use the pocket screws because the side would be exposed, then you could make um, pocket holes on the bottoms and put the pocket screws down there and you could hide them that way. So I have my bottom here. I want my bottom to sit just right about somewhere along that line so that when I do slide this over the baseboard it's not going to contact the baseboard at all and it won't interfere so I could lay it down like this I could put it here I could try to flush it up keep it there and, and make that line maybe put some dominoes or try to hold it in place with some clamps but that's too much work so easiest way to do it is to use spacers now I cut these spacers at 140 millimeters because that's where I want my bottoms to sit. So I'm gonna put my spacer blocks in and what we can do is we can flush up the spacer to the bottom. Once we have that flush, we can clamp that in place now from the back. And I'm gonna use two clamps for this because now I can, since it's gonna be supported by the table. You just wanna make sure you use your fingers as a gauge to make sure that they're perfectly flush. And then take your clamp, clamp it together. And now you can get two clamps, doesn't matter if you have a, a cutout for a toe kick or not. And now, rather than have to worry about any kind of clamping elements or anything like that, you just make sure you get your grooves in the right spot. And you can take this, apply your glue, and you can rest it up against there. And then now you know the fronts are also going to be completely flush. You just need to make sure that you keep your back against the spacer as you tack it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it this way so that I can see the line of where I need to hit the staples. So now I have my goggles on, I have my crown stapler set up and ready to go. I'm not gonna apply glue to the bottom portion because I'm not leaving that spacer in there permanently. Now, if you were, then that's fine. You can already affix that piece and you're done. You can apply glue to any side you want and that's it. I'm just gonna apply it here to the shelf, the bottom shelf, and then I'm going to join the two sides together 
and then I'll be removing the spacer so that the glue doesn't have a chance if it gets on there to dry and lock it in place because I need it for the next cabinet. So I'm just going to take a little bit of glue. You can use type on two, three, whatever you got's fine. Just a little bit of a bead on there. Now this is going to be locked in between two walls, so this is going to be really stable. I'm not going crazy on how much glue I'm going to apply, so I'm going to go ahead and butt that up against the spacer. And I'm just going to hold it in place first in the back. The front of my cabinet is flush as well, because that's the most important part, because space frames will be going on later. Main thing is here too, when you're shooting at the back, you want to make sure that you don't interfere with the groove. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time sliding in the back later on. We're going to do the same thing on this side here. Go ahead and flush everything up. Squeeze clamp. Okay, now I have that in place. So now I can go ahead and apply a little bit of glue to this part right here on the bottom shelf. Turn this over here. I'm just going to butt that right up against my spacer, hold it in place. Okay, and now while I have it in this position here on the table and everything is flush, I'm going to install my top spanner. That will give the cabinet more structure when I turn it upwards and keep the box a little bit square. Then I can worry about installing the top spanners and the, the back and the bottom nailers also as soon as I'm done. Just a little bit of glue. Don't have to go crazy. We'll put the whole box together first with the staples. Then when we stand it up, we'll have all our markings and lines of exactly where we need to drive the screws. We can do that later on. The crown staples will hold the box together good enough for us to do the assembly. Okay, so now we have that secure. We could take it, stand it up. We can take our clamps off. these out of the way, put these together over here, and now what I can do in the back is I can turn this around, and I could install my top spanner. Okay, you can see now I have a light bar clamp on the top, and I have it just sitting in place with very slight tension, just very slight tension on the carcass. And what that'll do is it give me a little bit of pressure as I put the spanner in place. And the way I'm going to do it is this back here. I'm going to just get it just right where I want it. Once you get it close to where you want it, put a little bit more pressure on the clamp. That'll hold it. Don't put too much pressure because then you won't be able to move your, your spanner. Wipe any excess glue off and then Go ahead and make sure that everything sits just flush with your carcass. Make sure you're not interfering with your groove. Because then you're going to have a hard time getting the back panel in later on. Once you have everything where you want it and you're satisfied, you can go ahead and tighten that clamp up a little bit. And go ahead and tap it in. And now what I'll do is install the back first and then we'll put our hanging rails on the back and we'll have the cabinet assembled. Then we can come back and we can drive screws in all our pieces. And you can see that not only are we perfectly flush with the front with our shelf, but we're sitting nice and level the way we want to be. Okay, so I've got the back cut and I'm going to install that before I install the hanging rails so that I can sandwich the back in place. Now if your plywood's anything like mine and it looks like a pretzel or a potato chip the way it's bent, 
you got to just kind of finesse it a little bit. So now I'll spin it around so you can see what I'm going to do next. Okay, so now we're going to just install the hanging rail in the back. I put a little bit of glue on there. You don't have to go crazy with the glue because it's going to be sandwiched in not only between the two pieces of the cabinet box, but it's also going to be screwed into the wall. Okay, so make sure that none of it's protruding. Pack it in place. And now the same thing with the top. Sometimes I say hanging rail, sometimes they say nailers. Doesn't really matter as long as you know what the heck they're for. Who cares about the terminology, right? Nice solid cabinet box. Now let's put the screws in. Make sure you're staying away from the edges because you can separate the plies there and they'll swell out and that'll give you another problem. So being that everything is tack stapled in place, I'm just going to go around and pre-drill everything first and then install the screws in one shot. Alright, so I'm using these GRK, they are Torx head, they are actually self-tapping. Over here they have like a, kind of almost like a drill bit uh, type style uh, countersink right on the, the horn of the screw. And basically that will countersink it itself. But I some of them I've had a problem I don't know if it was the plywood I was using or what but um, some of them I was able to uh, countersink and screw them in without using a drill bit and pre-drilling first I was able to just screw them straight in and that saves a lot of time but then I find some pieces of the plywood may have a little void or a, a kind of um, a wavy part of that plywood and I was driving in and it would swell up the edge of the plywood so I stopped doing it I just start uh, pre-drilling again I'm using inch and a half for this. Since you're driving into a longer piece like this, you can use inch and a half or inch and five eighths. I flip the cabinet down on its face. I have the hanging rail on the back and I'm gonna drive three screws in the bottom into the hanging rail. And that's gonna give me just a little more strength on the bottom. Even though we really don't need it, I like to go above and beyond. Okay, both sides screwed in, bottom hanging rail screwed in, and we have our perfectly assembled cabinet in just minutes. Now, I have to make face frames for this, but I have three more of these cabinets to do, so I'm going to be putting them together just in this method. That's going to bang these boxes together really fast so that I can get moving on this project, all right? So these are going to be the base cabinets for the window seat. They're all going to be butted up to each other. Okay, so you can see behind me, I affixed the other three all together, assembled those uh, cabinet carcasses the exact same way using that spacer technique. And uh, basically, I just have them mocked up here on the MFTs, just so you can see how massive this uh, window seat is going to be. All right, everybody. So I want to thank you guys for joining me in the shop today. I hope this helped you out with the assembly of uh, a cabinet. You know, this is kind of like quick and dirty method, putting it together, but still giving you as much strength as you need. You can see this thing is rock solid. I mean, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that. It's not even blowing in there. And that's because the strength is coming from right here so this is not going to take a lot of weight once a face frame goes on this it's going to be really rock solid i mean this is going to tie it together even uh make it more rigid than it already is so basically now what's going to happen is um the when the top goes on after these boxes are screwed together and it's fit into the area the the top will go on and tie all of them together from the top as well as the way they're screwed in through the sides so it's going to make it super strong then it's going to be screwed into the back wall also and there's going to be doors on the bottom of this so each cabinet is going to have i'm not i haven't decided yet if i'm going to do double doors or one long door on each cabinet there's going to be four in total and this is a nine foot run so we're going to see how that works out if i feel that once the face frame is on if i feel that the door is going to be too long and it might uh give it too much weight on the hinge then i'll split the um carcasses in half and make double doors on each one of the cabinets. 
So it's either going to be four doors or eight doors. I'm not sure yet. We'll figure out as we go along. So I want to thank you guys for joining me. Make sure that if you uh, like the video, you give it a thumbs up. I hope you guys learned something out of this. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the picture of a notification bell. That's going to notify you every time I upload a new video. I'm going to put this into the playlist of the cabinet building series because I think it's very useful and there's a lot of tips and tricks in here that you guys can use because not everybody has a domino machine. Not everybody has uh, the pocket screw jig or anything like that. And if you guys are assembling cabinets that either you can put in between two walls where you can hide these screws or if you just want to use uh, solid plugs and you can plug up those holes then this method is for you all right guys thanks for joining me again I hope you guys join me next time once I have this all together um, we're gonna make the doors put this in I'm gonna you I'll film the installation of this also because the final part of everything is going to be installing that window seat uh, to take up the whole rest of the wall and also the filler shaker panels in between underneath the window and the sides, making it a complete built-in slash wainscot wall. All right, I hope you guys join me for that. I'll see you next time.